You're listening to the Hot Guy Podcast, a fashion podcast that's all about giving you real advice on how to make it in this industry. Each week, I'm going to decode and debrief tips and resources on how to get started in the fashion industry, how to find your way, and how to create your version of success. I'm AK Brown, the Fashion Connector. Let's get started. Oh my God, guys. Hi, welcome to the Hot Guide Podcast. I'm so excited that you guys are here and decided to tune in to your listening pleasures when you really did not have to. So hello, hi, how are you? Um, For those that don't know, I am A.K. Brown, the fashion connector. Um, And I'm very excited for this podcast, for this first season, and everything that we do have in store for the Hot Guide um all that good stuff so if you don't know me my brand being the fashion connector i'm all about connecting people to the fashion industry through uh connections insights and resources um and that spans into so many different things now quickly touch on that here in a minute for those that do know me do rock with me do love me oh my god i love you guys too hey guys yeah all right so before we do some quick house cleaning, FAQs, <laughs> all that other type of stuff as far as like what this podcast is all about, first off, yeah, do not comment on my nasal uh, voice. Look, it's been a struggle since the week of my birthday, so about three weeks at this point. Um, I, had, I crossed my fingers and thank the high heavens that I have yet to contract COVID. However, I have still contracted everything from very severe colds to um, very intense sinus issues to the point where I may have to get a sinus surgery, which I did not realize was something you could have done. And I'm kind of terrified. Um, I have an appointment with my ENT here really soon, but I have been dealing with very intense sinus issues. I've done everything that I could from the home remedies to the flushing out of the sinuses to being on the highest form of Mucinex, like you got to show your ID to actually purchase it. Um, I've done all that um, and nothing is working. So bear with me as I heal and get better, but this is what my voice is going to be until all the mucus decides to leave my system, okay? So, this podcast, for one, I wanted to do this because today is my 10-year fashion anniversary. I've been in the industry for 10 years, um, and in my kind of like planning and talking to myself as far as goals and what I really want to do as far as expanding my brand as AK Brown, I really do want to start a podcast. And if you do know me, whether personally or professionally, you know that I have tried my fucking hand at starting a podcast for the 11th millionth trillionth time. And it's okay. I do feel like this one is going to stick. Now, I also did and I still feel like still do have a podcast um, called Where Fashion Meets with two of my good friends, but our schedules do not align right now. Everyone is doing really amazing things personally and professionally, and so I wanted to leave that podcast where it was, meaning I didn't want to continue it without Jay and Kayla. Um, I don't feel like it would have made sense without them or more so just like a group of fashion people that we could all, you know, really use the platform to elevate our own personal platforms and stuff like that. So I'm leaving it where it is. And I'm hoping that once our schedules do make sense and align, that we get back to that. Now, if that means that I am hosting three podcasts, and I say three, because I am also doing a kind of fashion and lifestyle podcast that did go live this week too. So make sure to also follow me and James at No Fits Given on Instagram and wherever you listen to your podcast. 
Um, but if that means I'm going to be hosting three podcasts at this point, so be it. I say that because it's like, I see so many people diving into the realm of podcasts and video content, and they are literally like spiraling off into bigger and better and great things. And I'm at the point where I I, I really just want to try my hand at shit because you never know what is going to be that one thing that is going to take off. And I've seen it to where it's not even planning at this point. That is the success behind, you know, a lot of these, again, podcasts or content, you know, platforms that are taken off. It's just people getting on and talking about very relatable shit and people relate to it so much that they promote it and it, it goes viral. So I really wanted to start this podcast because being in the space that I'm in, especially now being a fashion educator, I'm a adjunct fashion professor at my old school, which I'll talk about here in a minute. Um, and everything that I am trying to do with my platform, as far as bringing visibility to the fashion industry, especially for those that are in underrepresented groups. Um, I, I don't want to contribute to the gatekeeping. So it's like, I, whatever I know, or if y'all need me to research it, and then I talk about my findings on this podcast, this is what this podcast is going to serve. You know, for us millennials, and I feel like this is when we was like in middle school, kind of early high school, Ned's Declassified, that show on Nickelodeon, which they now are coming back with a podcast, which I'm very excited about. Um, I want this podcast to be literally like that, but like a fashion guide or like a fashion handbook on how to get started, how to find your voice, how to do this, how to do that. Like, because even though fashion is probably one of the biggest industries of, you know, our world, because it's so looked at in a very skewed way, I feel like there is a lot of gatekeeping or people are just not as easy to be like, hey, well, this is what you're supposed to do or this and the third. And I get it on both sides, but I think this is the best way for me to be able to give y'all as much information as I can without toting the line of like, I, obviously, I still want to make my money and, you know, offer services and consultations and stuff like that. But at the same time, like, if I can help you get your start and find your path and find your way and find your footing, I'm going to use um, this podcast to do so. So that's what the hot guide is for the most part all about, you know, a fashion, business, career, entrepreneurship uh, podcast and obviously, we're going to kiki a little bit and talk about what's going on in fashion, the hot topics, the controversial bullshit that be happening. I, I wish I would have started this podcast when everything was happening with like Kanye and Balenciaga because I have so many thoughts about it. I still have to do a YouTube video on um the whole Balenciaga thing. I did a blog post about the whole Kanye thing in a YouTube video. So I still got to do the Balenciaga, you know, thoughts and think pieces and stuff like that. So that's some other content and things that we're going to talk about. So if I have not mentioned this already, I'm going to mention this. Um, and I'm going to try my best to also stay on tangent because I like to go off on 18 million tangents. So I'm going to apologize in advance, but at the same time, I'm not, because this is my podcast and I can, can kind of do what I want to. So uh, deal with it. Follow me everywhere at AK Brown STL. Follow um, this podcast, I, we're only on uh, Instagram outside of like everywhere you can find your podcast. So on Instagram, it's the Hot Guide Podcast and hot is spelled H-A-U-T-E. OK, but for me as A.K. Brown, you can follow me everywhere at A.K. Brown STL. And then you'll be able to also find my other platforms like Pink View Studio, which is my magazine and editorial studio. Black and St. Louis Fashion, which is my fashion nonprofit. Um, Hotboss.co, which is my uh, fashion academy that is rebooting back up for 2023. So um, I got a lot of stuff going on that, again, I hope I can as I'm going through my journey kind of showing you guys and talking to you guys. And I hope that at least inspi inspires you. Lord, I cannot talk. Inspires, gives you, you know, answers to questions that maybe you've had. And that's another thing too. Talk to me, y'all. Um, I'm going to be posting clips and snippets and stuff like that. And the plan was for this first video and going forward to at least do video content as well as audio. 
But baby, I look like who the hell done it with my sinuses. So video ain't happening for this first episode. But hopefully going forward, I can do some video content, post it on the gram, all that stuff. So talk to me. Tell me what you want me to cover on the podcast. Um, My good friend, Brianda, who I hope to get on as either a guest or a co-host on one of the episodes, we're going to be talking about the no-nos when it comes to designing. And now I'm not a designer per se, but I I do have uh, experience in product development. She's a designer, a product developer, and a technical designer. So she knows firsthand designing for big corporations, but also for um, independent brands that need a designer, like what you should and shan't do when you're trying to come up with a custom clothing line, you know, or the do's and don'ts of styling or how, which is going to be a topic for the podcast, how COVID has now, you know, really transformed this industry and what this industry looks like post pandemic, because it's going to look pretty different. We're still in the midst of the pandemic. Our pandemic probably won't end for another one to three years. Um, We're just now getting into year three and most pandemics last between five and six years. So we still got a pretty nice way before we now enter into what our new normal is. So that is something I very much want to talk about for the podcast. Um, But today I want to get into what my fashion versary means and how I got started. Because especially for me being in St. Louis, um, a lot of people always ask me like, how are you able to get into the fashion industry in a city that is perceived to not really be into fashion or doing as well as like your New Yorks and your LAs and your Chicago's and stuff like that. Um, So I want to kind of dive into all that right here, right now. Starting with, first off, I've been interested in fashion ever since I was like 10, 11, 12. Um, I remember my aunt, may she rest in peace, miss you Aunt Sharon, um, or we called her auntie. Uh, she would have us do like these, you know, sewing projects and stuff like that. Or like when my big cousin, Lisey, who would watch us because she was like the second to oldest behind my brother. Um, you know, we would like do all these like craft projects and stuff like that. And then when I was probably like 11, 12, my mom, she got me like fashion magazines. Um, and like she would like, She gave me subscriptions, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I would have like my own subscription of Vogue or like my own subscription of this or my own subscription of like 17 and stuff like that. Um, And I remember I would um, like, you know, see what like the ads were, you know, or like what was on the runway and stuff like that. And I would have my sketchbook and try to, you know, make my own rendition of like, of, I remember to this day and I feel like I have the sketchbook somewhere. Um, It was like this jeweled boot that was in one of the ads in Vogue. And like, I did my own, I changed the colors, I changed the gemstones and stuff like that. Then when I was like 15, 16, I decided to come up with a clothing line called Lawrence Anthony, which is my dad, may he rest in peace, um, his first Emil name switch. He told me to do that. Now, I technically still own that name. And I would like to, you know, when I make my little money and I ain't got to pay no more bills outside of my student loans because they can go kick rocks and kiss ass. Um, You know, and I don't have a care in the world and I can really just spend my money however I want to spend my money. I do want to develop some type of product line around Lawrence Anthony. At first it was going to be eyewear. Then it was going to be a line of like some jackets and, you know, handbags and stuff like that. But I don't know what it is. So it's it's currently on the back burner. I own the brand. So it, it's there for whenever I want to pull the trigger. But long story short, I tried to do this brand when I was in high school. That epically fucking failed. Um, the reason is, and I know this now being a 31-year-old fashion professional that has gone through the woes of what my zones of geniuses are. I am not a fashion designer. The issue with that is being a 15, 16 year old, um, taking the required classes in high school, 
there wasn't a fashion design one, two, three course. It was family and consumer science. And outside of making your basic, you know, vest and shirt and all that other type of shit, then you were done. Um, Then, you know, you had like a study hall or like a period or whatever. And I was able to somehow basically do like my own independent study in that class. Um, And I think I was like making like t-shirts or something like that or like t-shirt designs and stuff like that. But apparently that wasn't good enough for uh, the teacher that was teaching at that time. And she probably is still there at Kirkwood High School. So I rem- I had a meeting with the principal and was my and I felt like I was in trouble because it's like y'all are basically trying to make me feel like I'm not doing well or doing good when in all actuality there was no conversation of like maybe this is just not your strong suit but again that's not what you're being told in high school that's more so what the fuck you find out in college and more so what I found out when I got my first fashion big girl job um so I went to Missouri State. Originally went for fashion design and entrepreneurship, got pregnant, came back home, and I switched my major to fashion merchandising and retail management at SEBA, which is now the school that I teach at. Um, So I'm very much going to give a shameless plug. Um, They are not telling me to say any of this, um, but I'm just speaking real facts, especially for those in St. Louis that are trying to figure out, you know, if going to school for fashion is worth it or not um i i have an opinion on higher education overall anyway however i do feel like for someone like me who is a black woman who technically is a part of a statistic being a mother that had her child at 20 like i was eight days old of 20 when i had my daughter um i i definitely feel like higher education is something that you very much want to pursue um now when it comes to fashion education especially in st louis there are so many great institutions here you have wash U, you have lindenwood which i am very much in support of because not only do i know the um chair of the fashion department at lindenwood who i love oh so much and so dearly um i do have my masters from lindenwood um there's also fontbonne university um and i feel like it's a couple other programs seba for me so the full name stevens the institute of business and arts downtown on washington literally smack dab in the heart of garment district um the first time that i ever stepped foot into the school i felt a sense of relief because what I realized in my method of like learning and what is best for me I don't really do well in like big lecture halls like I think that was where you know when I was at Missouri State or even when I did try to get some of my gen A credits from um you know SCLCC being just in a big classroom where I felt like nothing was like really personalized or personable it didn't work with me whereas the class sizes and i can even attest to this because i now teach there um we have maybe no more than 10 15 students if that i've had class sizes as small as three which it's good to get to know your fellow classmates i'm able to know my students on a very intimate personal level um i just felt like there was an extra step of we care if you succeed here and i wholeheartedly when i was even a student i felt like that i felt like they actually cared like if if there was something wrong with me if there was something wrong with my daughter they were very accommodating of trying to make sure that they gave me any and all options to succeed and you know propel in my journey um and I that was probably the best experience I had there I graduated with both my associates and my bachelor's from there I was summa cum laude when I graduated with my bachelor's and I think I was valedictorian or whatever you call it when I graduated with my associates um and my professors back then are now my co-workers now which is absolutely insane to say 
Um, and my professor, who is the department head, who I, I, I promise you, I, I love that lady so much. Lynn, if you are listening, I love you. I promise you. I, I love you. Um, she has always been a advocate and a promoter of me and how the opportunity even came about. She was showing my YouTube videos in class on how to be a product developer. <laughs> um, and my friend who was in her class, he messages me on Facebook like, hey, big homie, you famous. I'm like, what are you talking about? And he sends a picture talking about, we watching you in class and blah, 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 blah. And then the next day, he's like, Lynn told me to give you her number. I text her. She's like, I didn't know you had a master's. Like, you could have been and came and taught if I knew that. We're getting ready to do our um, re-accreditation. So once I get the A-OK, I'm bringing you in. And then it literally was a, I came in. It was a whole bunch of syllabi. What classes do you want to teach? And what is your availability? And I have been there ever since. And I absolutely love it. This upcoming, so next week, is going to be my third term teaching. Um, And I love it. I I didn't know I would like teaching as much as I do. But I really, really do. So that was the start of my fashion journey. Um, And when I was in school, so that was almost nine years ago. Um, I started a blog called Mind of a Fashionista, baby, ew. I say ew because I hate coming up with names and it probably took me so long to come up with that one. But all in all, it was the start of everything for me. Um, I knew that I wanted to get into the fashion industry, but again, I knew that design probably wasn't my thing, not even just because like I don't sew. And I don't want to design. But also from a realistic standpoint, at that point, I was a mom. And I had to be a little bit more like, okay, like, because I don't even know if I'm going to get the fashion job when I graduate. More so from like, I got to provide for me and my daughter. So what is another way for me to be able to get into the fashion industry? And I Googled this. um, And it said, start a blog. And I'm like, so you just start a website and you just talk about fashion. And I started my website on blogger.com. And my first post ever was how to wear colored or I think printed Oxford shoes. Because I had these cheetah print Oxfords with a pink sole that I had got from Just Fab. That was my first post. Um, and that's what that's what did everything. Like I even have on my left forearm in roman numerals my fashion anniversary date you can call it corny you can call it cheesy you can even call it stupid i don't care because everything that fashion has done for me i need to remember this date okay um from blogging you know i did blogging for a couple years then um my two ex best friends uh we decided to become like nicheless bloggers only because there was a lot going on at that time especially like in St. Louis um it was Ferguson um and I just felt like there was other things that we wanted to talk about besides just fashion so we decided to become the first like nicheless or nicheless bloggers um we did that for a couple years stuff like that um, and then around like 2017, 2018, I really wanted to get back into fashion because at my job, I had got promoted to being a product developer. So my first big girl job, I was a sample coordinator for a product development company in St. Louis. So what that means is, and I'm going to talk about this very much in depth on a um, future episode, but we were third party vendors. So we had customers like Target, Meyer, Walmart, and I'll even make it more relatable to the customers I ended up working with, your Fila, your Urban Outfitters, um, Buckle, uh, Hustler, um, let's see, Hot Topic, Spencer. I I worked with a whole bunch of people. Um, instead of them having or controlling the in-house design, in their corporations or in their companies, they hired people like us 
to where we had CAD designers, technical designers, product development. We handled the shipping and the receiving of the goods. And then they basically bought it from us. And then they would upsell it and figure out what their retail was going to be and then sell it to the end consumer or the end customer. Um, So I started off as a sample coordinator. All in all, it was basically a paid internship if we really want to if we really want to talk about that, um, cause come to find out it was me and another girl, Katie, I was on one side of the company. She was on the other side of the company. Um, I'll be very frank. i am be very honest. And I'm gonna need y'all to, if y'all know me, y'all know me. If y'all don't, I'm let's, let's get some straight. I'm not going to sugarcoat shit. And I want to make this a, very in-depth story time just because what happened with this company is also how my brand has skyrocketed to where it was because of the bullshit that I endured at this company um but all in all it was two new positions I saw one on Craigslist maybe I wasn't using the best um decision making skills I also was probably very desperate for my first job out of college because at this point it was about five months. And I'm like, okay, uh, all right. I'm tired of working at this call center um, doing surveys to these farmers. Yes, that's what I did before I got my first big girl fashion job. I did marketing research to farmers for Monsanto. Okay. It, it was easy, but it was, I was over it. I wanted to get into fashion. So I found this job on Craigslist, went for my first interview. I, I remember all this to this day. Um, I interviewed with my old boss, a.k.a. co-worker, Dan, um, the HR lady, Kathy. Um, I, I don't even remember who else was in that interview. I even toured, met who would eventually become my boss, Leslie, um, then didn't hear shit about it. Apparently, they were still thinking on the position, if they even wanted it to happen. Okay, cool. August rolls around. End of August. I just so happened to check my old school email as an email from them, like, hey, long story short, apparently, Again, this should have been a red flag too, but maybe I was just that damn desperate. They had offered the position to someone else and she decided to turn it down for Nordstrom. Not saying if that's a bad thing or not, girl, because it probably was. It probably was a good thing. So they wanted to bring me back in for another interview. I agreed, came back in, was offered the job as soon as I got back home. Cool. It was my first big girl job, and I wanted to take it for what it was. Um, so I was the sample coordinator. I basically managed the samples that came in, checked them in, made sure that they were organized um, physically, like on our walls and stuff, but also were inputted into our system, um, all that stuff. I mean, all in all, it was literally like a paid internship. From there, however, um. I learned about product development because who I I eventually took over for my ex coworker who if you're listening Anna I am so proud of you and the business that you have developed you are my inspiration and we need to get together soon um a very talented designer by the name of Anna she was a product developer in my department And it got to the point where because of our turnover rate, she eventually was doing everything. She was doing her own CADs, her own specs, and her own product development. And for one person, that is extremely too much. And I took it as an opportunity of let me help her and learn. Because I know it, it's apparently nobody else is going to teach me shit. Let me learn from her. Because she was very, 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 very knowledgeable. It also got to the point where 
then she got pregnant. And it was evident that she was going to go have to go on maternity leave. Then, before maternity leave, she started a wood sign business that literally skyrocketed. And this is what I even said at the beginning of this podcast. Like, you do not know what idea is going to take the fuck off. It doesn't have anything to do with planning, with this and that. Like, she just started, she started a acrylic and wood sign business. For the most part, geared towards, you know, brides and stuff like that. And to my knowledge, to this day, she does that full time. And I am so proud of her. And it's it's inspiration. So while she was doing that, I'm like, okay, well, can you teach me how to do pricing? Can you teach me how to do this? Can you teach me how to do that? Then she goes on maternity leave. And I'm basically the interim product developer. I also understand in my mind that and maybe they didn't realize I understood this because I think they thought that I was dumb. But that's another conversation for another day. Um, I understood that it was going to be cheaper for them to promote from within than to find a outside hire. I know this for a fact. I'm not stupid. I'm not dumb. I have three degrees. I'm very smart. So she comes back from maternity leave. She literally, and I was not here when this happened because uh, my grandma had unfortunately passed away. Um, that was the year that, um, my dad had died and then my grandma died. 10 months after my dad died so it 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 was it was a lot but that was the same year that my grandma had died so I was actually out for um bereavement when this happened Anna came in she sold off her baby quit when I came back two days later I was promoted cool so then up until COVID I was the product developer um So that's where I say, you know, in high school, I obviously was not going to figure this out. Even in college, I didn't know that product development was a thing. I always thought it was just, you know, being a designer or being a stylist or being a fashion merchandiser. No, there are so many other jobs that you can have in the fashion industry. That is going to be a future episode. Um, But I found my footing in product development to where I am now a product development strategist. I also do freelance product development for businesses. Um... I feel like that was my calling. Why? I didn't have to draw shit. I controlled it. Product development, in essence, is project management. Okay? I'm not saying I'm the best project manager, but baby, I got things done. Okay? I got things done. And that's essentially what it is. Now, if you can design, especially on like CAD, you know, digitally and stuff like that you are very much going to be more attractive than someone like me and i've told this to aspiring designers if you're able to do cad if you're able to do tech packs if you're able to do specs if you're able to do flat lays patterns stuff like that and then if you can be able to execute your own designs and manage the product development process then you are a very uh, attractive ideal candidate for companies and you should use that to your advantage and promote that and make yourself the complete package especially now because of covid because those jobs are still like they we don't have full fleshed out teams anymore we're looking for people that can do everything i i don't design and i'm at this point i don't know if i'm learning how to design because i'm not doing that i am at manager level at this point so i will manage a team of cat designers and technical designers and make sure everything is done and then take it from them and then talk to the factories and do everything from the conception to uh, make sure the samples look right and talk to the you know visual team and talk to the sales team and stuff like that um so i did that until 2020 but even before 2020 i was done at that job um again i feel like i want to try to make this a full story time um but i hated that company i hated the people that were there it was very evident that there was a type of person that they wanted at that job and i was not that type of person and i was trying to get out of that job for almost a year and a half before COVID happened. I even went on job interviews and was told that I was overqualified because of how I was trained to be a product developer. I basically was interviewing with people that I was qualified for their position and not the position that they were trying to hire for. So it was a very trying and difficult time. Then COVID happened. We were sent home. 
We were told that they would not do pay cuts. Then they did pay cuts. Then a month later, I wasn't even furloughed. My position was absolutely fucking eliminated. And I was probably only the one of the only ones that had school age kids. It was probably a couple other people. I know someone had twins and this and the third, but everyone else was either single and young or middle age and their kids were damn near grown. So yeah, I, it, but I'm going to say this, it was very much a blessing and not a blessing in disguise, but more so a blessing smacking me dead smack in my face. Because I knew that everything that I wanted to do, I wanted to get back into blogging. At that point, I was styling people. Um, I really wanted to become AK Brown, the brand, and not Alex Brown, the person. And I used the experience of getting fired during COVID to skyrocket my brand. And, and oh, God. I may I can't even say everything that has happened. I've been featured in Essence and In Style, Fashion Bomb Daily, Pop Sugar. Um, I've styled our Congresswoman Corey Bush. Okay. Do you guys know, which I am very excited to announce, and it probably will be online by next week, so by our second episode. I am speaking at magic in February. Y'all, if y'all are, if y'all are the true fashion girls and guys, y'all know this is huge. That's why I kind of want to do a story time before I go to magic, because all these people at my old job, I'm going to see in February. The same people that try to make me feel incompetent and try to say, I had people that literally were lying on me and my coworker. Shout out to Kiki. I miss you, boo. Like it, we were literally in HR's office. Like we were on fucking trial. Didn't have any support. And it didn't, it didn't, it didn't help that I was one of two of the minorities. Okay. Like, it's so much that happened at that job. So to now be in a position to where I'm able to speak on a platform where these people go to hopefully get money and deals and stuff like that. But I'm being brought in as an expert to speak on this panel, one of the more promoted panels that they are going to be pushing for this season at Magic. Oh, I cannot. Ooh, 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 wait. If y'all don't know me, baby, I'm petty. And I've tried to keep it down. But I'm trying to exude a, a professional level of pettiness. Baby, I cannot wait to see all them. Any old bosses. Any old coworkers. Especially the ones that really thought they would be funny to lie on me. And jeopardize the way that I would provide for my child. Because they don't know how to be adult. And professional. Oh, ho, I'm going to get my best get up and go there and speak on my experiences of being a black woman in fashion and being an underrepresented group in fashion and then go twiddle my fine ass over to them and gloat in their face. Now, you can call me what you want. You can say what you want, but I don't give a damn because this is what we experience in this industry this is another reason why i wanted to start this podcast this is also why i am so happy and thankful that magic is hosting this panel it's women of color in fashion for magic um because it's going to give us the platform to be able to speak on issues like this you know and for those if you don't know what magic is um it's the biggest fashion trade show apparel trade show last year t-pain performed Katy Perry spoke. Kristen Cavallari, who, if you know from reality TV, um, because I know both sides, she was on Laguna Beach, The Hills, and then her own series, Uncommon James, I think if that's what's called. But her brand is called Uncommon James. So she has like a lifestyle brand named after her kids. Um, So she spoke. So many people, notable fashion people, have been a part of magic. So to be brought in, I pro- like 
if you if you thought I wasn't shit before, baby, you can't tell me nothing because apparently I'm somewhat of the shit to be asked to be a part of this. Okay, so I I promise you, I I'm going to make it a point to go find their booth because I know where it normally is, and say hey. Oh, well, what are you doing here? Oh, well, I'm actually a speaker at this season of Magic. So y'all have fun on the clock trying to sell them little uh, discounted beanies while I go be inspirational on the stage. Okay? So (laughs) I had to get that out. I'm going to do a full story time. But that's essentially how I got started in the fashion industry. It really started with school and blogging and then really figuring out what I wanted to do and I've done everything at this point from blogging which I now still do um and I'm trying to get more deep into it because I didn't realize how much traction my website is and was getting um I do styling um I'm now calling myself the intentional brand stylist I'm trying to figure out a coined term so if any of y'all can help me, because I know I, I suck at names, I will give you a free service, um, some Starbucks, what have you. Um, hell, liquor, if that's your vice. Um, but my, I don't, here's the thing. I don't like personal styling. I hate it. Um, I'll talk about that in a future episode. But I am someone who likes to work outside of like editorial and wardrobe. I like to work with people who have very intentional brands. And that want to exude their brand 24-7 through the art, the power, and the tool of personal aesthetics. That's my client. So maybe it is a form of personal styling, but I don't work with all personal style clients. I'm not working with the everyday person anymore. And I'll talk about why in another episode. Um, I have my own editorial studio and magazine. We actually just put to bed the last issue of 2022 um last week so you can be able to get those uh issues now pinkmewstudio.com slash issues both the digital and physical copies um what else do i do i have my nonprofit for fashion in st louis um i have my hand in media not only just in you know publication but also in pr and when you go on my website akbrown.com slash press all of those press links and i feel like at this point it's over 30 I secured all of those, whether it was interviews, blurbs, quotes, um, TV segments. I got all of that pressed on my own. I even want, I, I didn't want to. I did for a hot second. Um, I started a boutique fashion PR firm called Hot Press PR, um, but I closed it because I wanted to use myself as a case study on how to get press. For yourself as a fashion brand. So now that I've successfully completed the case study, uh, I now am going to start opening up uh, press services. It's going to be limited press services to start. So I'm not going to be your PR rep per se. I'm more so going to be the person that wants to do their own PR but doesn't know where to start. I can help you do a press release or I could do your own press release. I could do your own pitch deck. Um, you know, I can help you find clients or help you find contacts in order to pitch to. That's where I'm going to start. But I've done it all. I, I've literally have, do, or in my opinion, have done it all. I don't, again, I don't do design. That's not my zone of genius. I try to open a boutique and failed, which is absolutely okay. Because I don't think that my, I should have my hand in selling shit. I don't care to sell shit. Um, I don't care to have a boutique. I don't feel like that is my calling. I think that for all of you guys that are running successful boutiques, um, y'all kudos to you because I could not do it. I shut my shit down within the matter of three, four damn months and let it go and let it be. Um, so if you are a successful boutique, I would love to have you as a guest. Let's talk about how to run a successful boutique for those that are looking to do so. Uh, Jan's, if you're listening, I would love to have you on as a guest. If y'all don't know her, and this is a shameless plug because I just respect and love her so much for everything that she has accomplished. She is a, I want to make sure I'm quoting what you are correctly, a boutique coach, but she also runs a million dollar boutique and just opened up her second boutique, which we know is going to get more than a million dollars in revenue. So she was in retail for a course of, I think, over a decade. 
um, her last retail job, I think the store completely shut down in St. Louis. She decided to write a book, which was very successful. That spiraled into her starting a uh, boutique academy and then started her own boutique. And she's been highly successful in both of those ventures. So I'm going to see if I can try to get her on. So James, if you're listening, please come on as a guest. Please, please, please. But if not, um, y'all still need to follow her, Jane Charte. Um, and I think uh, Brazen is the first boutique. I don't remember the name of the second boutique, um, but I'll make sure to get that information for the next episode so I can make sure to pass it off to y'all. OK, so all in all, that's how I got started. That's where life has ended for me as far as fashion. Um, 2023 is really just all about the elevation of me and all of my brands. Um, I'm really trying to expand the brand outside of St. Louis, but to bring the visibility back to St. Louis. So whether I go to, you know, Vegas in February for magic or go to New York for fashion week or go here or go there, I want to always make sure that I'm bringing the visibility back to St. Louis and to continue to bring the visibility back to the underrepresented groups in fashion, especially for me being a black woman. Um, Because regardless of what you may think, we are still a very underrepresented group in fashion um, and it needs to be talked about and we need to figure out ways to um, improve that for sure going forward. So uh, next week, what the heck are we talking about? I'm actually looking at my list. We are talking about the top lessons I've learned in the fashion industry. So maybe I'll make that the damn story time from that shit ass job. Um, we're going to touch on some fashion news, what's going on and all that stuff. And then I'm going to give you guys a concrete list on how to get started in the fashion industry. Tangible, takeaways, step-by-step lists on how to, and this is not going to be specific towards any type of niche. This is just in general, whether it's, you know, start by going to school or start by networking. Or I'm going to give you guys literally how I did it and how you guys can do it too, especially for those that are not in big fashion city. St. Louis is still not a big fashion city because we're still trying to revitalize our garment district. So, you know, we're, we still have a lot of things to do and a long way to go. So I can hopefully give a perspective on how I went about it not being in a major fashion city, okay? So you want to make sure to tune in. That episode is going to go live next week on January 12th, okay? I'm going to be back every Thursday with an episode each and every Thursday, okay? I was going to do it bi-weekly and then said, fuck it. <laughs> We're going to do it every week because uh, I just once I started to plan out everything, I realized I need to do this weekly because there's so much I want to talk about that it's either going to be every week for about 45 minutes to an hour or every other week. And it's going to be damn near two hours that I'm talking. And I know y'all love me just like I love me, but I don't know if I want to listen to myself talk for two hours at a time. So I'm going to try to break this up as much as possible. OK, so until next week, please. Follow me on AK Brown STL everywhere on Instagram, specifically the hot guide podcast and no fits given for me, probably the easiest come to my own personal pages, AK Brown STL. Tell me what you want me to talk about. If there's any questions on the business of fashion, how to get started in fashion. If there's any guests you would like me to try to get onto the podcast, please let me know so I can make sure that I'm giving you guys the content that you want to hear. Okay. So until then, thank you guys for rocking with me on my first episode and on my 10 year fashion anniversary. I appreciate y'all so much. And I will be talking to y'all next week. Bye.